So why do we have these people up here? What's the tactic today? Ridiculously good looking people. Yes, and why else? What's the chef tactic six? Leave what? Conversion. Because it doesn't matter how many leads you generate, and what matters is what? How many you convert? I'd much rather generate 20 leads and convert one than generate 2,000 leads and generate one. Would you guys agree with that? That's what we're talking about today. Now, the reason we have these people up here is because they're all very good at that, right? So let's go through this very quickly. If you would, just for those who may not know everybody up here, just your name, what team you're on, and what position you hold on the team. I'm Donnie Wilkins with the Legacy Group and Listing Specialist. Chris Miner, Big Properties Group, Fire Specialist. I'm Stephen Preston, a broker supply team, and I'm Fire Specialist. Jamie Genesick, North Idaho Home Monitor. I'm the lead guy, I guess. Team leader. <laughs> Andrew Singleton, RNG Group, uh, Listing and Fire Specialist. Right, Jason Walker, uh, Jason Walker team. All right. So, you guys have been doing this a while, all of you. It's not your first rodeo, right? And the reason your names came to mind, I sent them a text yesterday, so they're very good sports, because this was short notice. But as I was walking through this, there's a lot of stuff I can present to you, and none of it's as valuable as hearing from people on the front lines, specifically on this conversion piece. So here's what we're going to do. Here's the goal. We do have a PowerPoint. I cut out a ton of the slides. So we just have the, the biggest things that we're going to cover. We're going to go over what Gary says on the slide, and then we're going to get their take on some of these points. Is that good with everybody? Okay. Yeah. Right. So perspective on internet lead capture and conversion. So first thing Gary talks about is a website's a great tool when it does what? When it's easy to find and use, because if people can't find your site, it's no good. Would you agree with that? Okay, number two, it has to be full of what? So you can see the screen. Bless you. Valuable. Full of valuable information. Right? There has to be something there that's valuable to them. Has to be able to do what with leads? Catch, Catch or capture leads. Okay? And the internet's not a replacement for human interaction. Now that's a big one, and we're going to talk more about that. A website's really important, and it does not replace human interaction. Would you guys agree with that? Right? There's still that component. You can't be Wizard of Oz forever when it comes to lead generation, because at some point in time you have to meet the person. Okay? So, <laughs> Here's, what, here's I'm going to read through a couple of these, these key points that I want to get you guys' take on this individually. So here's what Gary said. Your website should work for you. Many websites, and these are two faux pas. Many websites are sources of free information with no obligation. Okay? The other side to that, that two-sided coin, is some websites require registration before giving access to anything. Okay, both are really problematic. So my question for you guys, we can just go down the line however you want to do it, I don't care, but... As you guys have your site set up now, how many clicks, how many properties they get to look at, so you know what I mean, before their registration is prompted or required, how does that set up with you guys' as teams on your different websites? We'll start with Donnie, go down. Okay, so on our website, um, you know, they go into uh, Coeur Home Search and pulls up our website, they click on it, and um, they can set up a search, but it's only going to let them look at three different homes. So about three different clicks after that, then it's going to require them to go ahead and sign up. Okay. So you're giving them giving an opportunity to see how the site delivers information, what that information looks like, how it's presented three times before they have to sign up. Right. Okay. Chris, what about you guys? That would be the same. That would okay. be the same for us as well. Three clicks, and then they sign up, and you either have a, a good lead, or you're going to have somebody that gives you false information. Okay. Jamie? Same thing. Three? Yeah. Andrew? Same thing. Jason? Same thing. So did we hear a common theme there? Did we all want to write something down? How many clicks before you should require information? Three. Three. Can you guys tell us what your website domains are? Yeah, mycdahomesearch.com. And linkproppingthegroup.com. Can you also tell me what that platform is? Is it Boomtown? Yeah. NWID Home Search is what Stevens is. And uh, we use WolfNet IDX. I use North Idaho Home Hunter and uh, uh, Edge Business Suite. So the, the market leader platform? Edge, yeah, just uh, Edge Business Suite. Okay. Idaho Home List .com, Boomtown. And uh, JasonWalkerTeam.com, uh, Torch X. Okay, so what's something else you notice going through this line? Do they all use the same platform? 
Is the platform the most important piece? No, working your system is the most important piece. Okay, so that's a great question. Thank you guys. Um, and here's what Gary said before we go to the next slide. Success does not come from clicks, hits, or inquiries, right? So clicks to the site, hits on the site, or inquiries. Success doesn't come from those things. He says success comes from appointments. And that's what we're going to jump into is that's the whole process here is how do we convert them from a hit, a click, an inquiry into actually a face-to-face, -face, an appointment, because that's where we make our money, right? I would argue that most of you, if you can get you face-to-face -face with somebody, your conversion rate's very high. What we're talking about is the gap between the initial hit on the site to that point. Right, we want to shorten that, that window. Okay? So this is a question I want to get you guys to take on as well. So the question Gary posed in this session was, when is a lead a lead? Because we often use that term loosely in this business. Right? I had 647 leads on my site last month. No, you didn't. You had 647 views on your site. Right? So the question is, and what Gary wanted us to wrestle with is, when is a lead actually a lead? Okay? So here are his definitions of these three things, then we'll talk to panelists. When your visitors come to your site, their track is hits initially. That's what Google tracks, AdWords tracks, all that kind of stuff. It's just hits to the site. Inquiries are the first action they take. Okay? When they register, whether it be for property search, whether it be for uh, white papers you guys provide, the home buying process, the home selling process, 47 ways to make your home sell faster, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Right? That's an inquiry. And then most internet savvy agents agree that only when you've made contact with the inquirer and determined their needs do they become a lead. Now my question for you all, because you've been doing this a long time, how do you define a lead within this criteria? Because you guys track your leads, you're talking, if you're not the regular team leader, you're talking to your team leader about how many leads you've generated or are connected with, so how do you define that on your teams? So for me, um, when I'm, I'm talking um, to the um, person that signed up for the website, when I'm talking to them, um, I mean, it can be two years down the road, so you got to decide whether you're going to spend the time and work with this um, lead. And I really feel that if if I'm talking to them and, and I get all their search criteria and I start sending them homes, then I believe okay, they're they're a lead. Sure. So okay. um, a lot of them that I work with aren't in this area; they're coming from out of town. So. Um, you know, of course, I try to get appointments with them, but you got to wait until they get here. Sure. So, sure. That's for me. Okay. Right. Uh, two points. I agree with Donnie. Here, at, we track it uh, from the time they sign up to the site to the time we close with them. It's a nine to ten month process. So, an internet lead, you can have the luck of the draw, and you can have that deal that you can set up on your site, you close them, you show them property in a week, and you're closing in 45 days or whatever. So, that happens, and it's great. <coughs> But on average, it takes nine to ten months to have that conversation. You're in the relationship business, and you're building that relationship. Uh, my observations are most likely on TJ's, Jason's, Donnie's. They're on all of our sites, and we're comp everybody's competing, and so you're competing with that. They're on Zillow. They're on. You you have to be the Google and the resource and the economist of your area to have the greatest success on that. Good point, Stephen. Yeah, a uh, lead for me would be somebody that. I've Made contact with either text, email, or phone. I don't necessarily say it have to be on the phone. Uh, and they've given me some indication that you know, there's, we've got a chance, you know, there's a future there in the relationship. So after that point, maybe just a contact or, or something out there. And then once we've met face to face and there's an aggressive plan done, and I'm their agent, they've got a buyer's rep, now they're go from a lead to a buyer. So how I, I categorize that. So. Until I think it's some kind of back and forth dialogue going, then I'm not going to leave. Okay. Jay. Real quick, when I started here about four years ago, I had bought it and I truly had, I don't know, I was paying some thousand dollars for leads from them. And I would get Donald Duck and Daffy and all that kind of stuff. And I, I probably I probably had received almost a hundred of those leads. And it was, a, it was about a one-year time period from when I came from the place over to here. And I went back to track those as I'm opening up, putting everything in the database. And one thing I made a huge mistake on, because they didn't have phone numbers and everything else, they just had, a, they just had an email address. I thought, well, they're just not any good. Well, I went back, and about 75 to 80% of those people bought something in that last 12 months, and not from me because I did not treat them like a lead. I figured, well, it's just an email, it's not really any good. So, 
I would encourage people, if you get an email address, that is something viable if you use the system. You pick a system and use it. It doesn't mean that it's not any good. It just, it may take a while for them to, to get a hold of you, like Chris was saying. We do a lot of land, so ours is probably 18 to 27 months, period, between the time when they first get on our website for the time when they start really searching and buying. So it can be a huge time period. So don't poo-poo that, that it's a good lead. But really, you know, you let the system do most of your work for you, and then, you know, then it's a viable lead when, like say, text and email, phone call, then you really start working with them. Because people don't want you vomiting all over them when they first get on the website, normally. Right, they want their space. Yeah. Okay, Andrew, how about you guys? We, uh, basically a lead is someone who we qualified as having either a good email address, phone number, something correct. Um, you know, that's the weeding out of the registrations, if you will, because you can count on registrations or you can count on leads. I count on leads as people that we're actually working as well. And our maturing process, we figure, is about 18 months. Um, so we, we work through that. And a lot of them, you know, like you said, I'm, I'm in contact with people once, twice a month that they still haven't given me a valid phone number, but they'll email or the younger generation, they'll only text. You know, I can call them until the cows come home and they will never pick up the phone. So, um, and a lot of these guys is, out of towners, I mean, I don't know how many percentage of your business, business is coming from out of town, but ours is huge. And when they say they're on everybody else's website, it's true. You know, and there's a couple people on this panel where, you know, oh, I'm working with so and so. Great, I have to continue to follow up. If he doesn't follow up, can I follow up with you? <laughs> sure. You know, so, I mean, to think that, oh, they logged on my website, they're mine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, close. Absolutely, good point. All right, Walker. Um, yeah, so. I look at it a little bit differently. I view it as, do we have a conversation, right? Is some, are we emailing back and forth? Are we talking? Is some, are we texting? I mean, text is a good way to communicate now. Um, because a lead, right, that's a big definition. It may be a lead to a listing. It may be, they may have just filed bankruptcy, but they have a mom or dad who want to sell a home. So we just have a conversation and try and either get an appointment, get a referral, or establish a relationship. So. As long as we have correspondence, that's what I'm after. Okay. Awesome. Next thing, we're just going to hit on one part here, but I wanted to point this out. Because I know there's some people in this room that say, yeah, yeah, internet lead generation, that's cool, that's them, that's not me. Well, if it's not you soon, you won't be here in the business. Um, because here, the bottom one here, if you can't see it, I'll read it to you. 44% of the buyers found the home they actually purchased online in 2015. Let's give you some context there. In 2001, that number was 8%. Okay, so not surprising, Internet's where they are. I know you all know that, but I wanted to put some teeth and some meat into it that if you're not yet exploring, if you're not figuring out a process to work these online leads, you will be left behind. It's already started. Okay, so keep that in mind as we're going through this because this is definitely the direction we're going. So uh, a couple things on these truths, and I want to get you guys' take on a few of these. Um, I'm only going to read a couple of things Gary said because we're going to have this PowerPoint available for you guys as well. Um, the second one, if you have a system in place to capture buyers and sellers and have a system to convert them, the internet can yield great leads. Would you guys agree with that? Right? Gary always says, he's famous for saying the quality is in the quantity. Right? You might want to write that down if you've never heard him say that. The quality is in the quantity. That's what internet lead game is. It's a quantity game. It's a volume game. Right? You're not going to generate one lead and do one deal. You have to generate a lot of leads to work down to a small number of deals. That's just the way the game works. And then the last one behind Stephen's head, internet lead capture and conversion is a numbers game, like I just said, based on volume. Now, in this, we had another conversation at ALC, and I wanted to bring this up. So we took our agent leadership council through this process, and how many people know that the market's up right now? Three people, fantastic. So, uh, the rest of you, this is news, the market's up, it's busier than it has been in a long time, and here's what we know, you need to look back at your business and track your business to see, am I up this year based on my unit count, or what? Volume. Now, why, was, why would that be important? Why would I encourage you all, as soon as this meeting is done, to go do that? Why is that so critically important? Are you keeping pace or lagging behind? If you go back and look at your business, and your business is down in units, but up in volume, you're not up. The market's carrying you. Do you follow me? Because what is also up right now is the average sales price. Can we control the average sales price? No. We have zero control. What can we control? We can control activities that generate leads that lead to units. 
So when you're looking at your business, make sure that if your business is up this year, that you're up by units and not volume. Because if you're all fat and sassy because you're up on volume, you have nothing to celebrate. I'm not trying to be Debbie Downer, I just want to be realistic. Because when the market starts shifting, we go back to a balanced market, your business will fall. Okay? It will fall down to whatever level the market's at. So you want to make your business based on units. Okay? Now let's look at how sellers and buyers on the internet act and what they use it for. Because you guys all work, some work with buyers, some work with sellers, a little bit different. Um, here's what Gary said. Sellers on the internet talk a couple things. Who does listings here? So Jason, you do. Andrew, Donnie. Okay, so you guys would be the ones I'm asking here. They're wanting to get an idea of what the market's doing, yes or no? Yes, okay. They're wanting to look at comparables. Are they basing the value of their house based on what others are listed for, yes or no? Yes, okay. And they want to also uh, make sure that you, and they're not telling us this, but NAR is wanting to make sure that they have no loyalty to agents or companies they come across online. Have you heard that before so far in this panel? So don't get sucked into complacency of thinking that because they're on your site, they're your lead. Okay, now buyers on the internet. The other people on the panel, start early in their timeline. How early did you say you're seeing the average people come online before they're here ready to buy? What are you seeing? On average for us, it's uh, 9 to 10 months. 9 to 10 months for you guys? 12 to 18 months. Same. Okay, so it's not a fast game, and if you don't start now, they're always going to be that much behind. Right, so you have to start it here and now. So there's three points. I want to go through these and have you guys kind of tell them a little bit about what you do, but there's three parts to the lead internet lead generation model that Gary wrote, okay? First one is create and maintain an internet presence. If you don't have that, don't collect $200, don't pass go. If you do, go to number two. Then we have to lead generate for website traffic because if we have a site but we drive no traffic to it, do we generate any leads? No. Not a trick question. Thank you, John. No. The answer is no. If we have a fantastic site and no one goes to it, we will generate no leads. And the third, and probably the most important, is the capture, connect, cultivate, and close. Because we can have the best website, get a ton of traffic, and not generate any leads off of said website. Okay? So this is where I want to get an idea quickly from you guys. There's essentially two ways to get internet lead generation traffic. And if you guys know something I don't, please jump in. But there's online and offline. So online, search engine optimization. Bottom line, you're paying to get your site the highest, or you can pay for leads, pay per click. Okay? Offline would be anything else you do directing traffic back to the site. Is that correct with you guys' experience? So what are you guys doing? Really quickly, just go through, not specifically, but are you doing primarily online, offline, mix of the two? What are you guys doing? For listings? Uh, doing uh, offline. Okay. Uh, radio, Shark Tank, okay. advertising for listings. <clears throat> okay. Brian, what about you guys? Search engine. Search engine optimization? Uh, I'd say mostly the whole lot. Okay. A little bit of everything? Yeah. Andrew, what about you guys? Offline and search engine. Okay. Walker? Uh, listing, aggregation, off, yeah, offline. A little bit of search engine. But you're primarily offline, correct? Okay. Yeah. So again, lots of ways to do it. If you want to do internet lead generation, you don't have to be completely all SEO. That's my point there. Okay? Now there's four C's, and this is where we'll kind of start wrapping up for our panel. So the four C's are capture, connect, cultivate, and what? You've taken a class with me, which am I most passionate about? Close, because if you do all the other three and you don't do the fourth, you're wasting your time. Okay? The close is absolutely essential. I think you guys will be able to give us some good perspective on this, because if you can't close to an appointment, you're wasting your time as well. Right? So first, we have to capture interested people. We have to connect with them on a personal level. We have to cultivate the relationship over time, and we have to close for an appointment. So from your perspective, one or two of you, um, we know how you capture. We've talked about that. How do you connect with them? What does that initial conversation look like with them? Because I'm sure this group wants to know what, what scripting do you use, what tools do you use to make that connection and close for that appointment? Not all so at once. Connecting with them, um, use uh, LP Mama okay. um, <coughs> to pull from them their search criteria. Also, if they're working with another agent, um, a lot of information using that script. Um, that's, that's what I use. Jim? I was just going to say, probably the biggest thing that I see people do wrong, and which I've done most of it wrong, is they go, you want to look for the coolest, new, fanciest thing in the whole world. I'll tell you, I'm totally sold on the edge system that all of us have. I mean, I'm not saying these more advanced teams don't have some other stuff, but 
find something and figure out how to use it. There's a lot of training on Market Leader on that system. I'm totally sold on it. That's why when I upgraded, I, I went with the business suite. But it doesn't matter. You can go get 150 new leads this week, but if you don't know what to do with them, you're just throwing them there. <coughs> just take the money and let them blow down the street. If you don't get them in the system and learn what do you do on day one and day three and day five and day seven, when do you do 33 touch? When do you do all the other, you know, the 8x8, eight eight, the 12x12? 12 12. If we don't figure out how to use all that stuff, we're just wasting our time. Our whole business is in that database. And so I just encourage you guys to pick a system and start using it. And there's lots of people that would give help. Everybody's open to say, hey, we use this. <coughs> we do. But I think that's the best thing that I can think of is, is learn how to start communicating when to do it, when to not do it. That's probably the most important thing that I can see. Absolutely, and not giving up on a system too soon, because if the average is 12 to 18 months before a lead comes to a, an appointment or a deal, I see a lot of agents that will sign up for systems and give up after six months because it's not generating any good leads. Well, the nature of those online leads is twice the time frame you've given it, so yeah. not giving up too soon. Exactly. Hook up with people that are doing it to make it happen. I mean, for God's sakes, if you want to learn how to sell houses, talk to Brian. I mean, obviously, you know what he's doing. Look at his paychecks. But I, I, I <laughs> that's the thing. We don't, we, don't, we don't stick with something when you're new. Even if you've been in a couple years, uh, you still don't have things down yet. I mean, when you're when you're pumping the pump, you don't even know what if you're doing is what is right or what is wrong. So get with somebody that can help you to figure doing the right things, and then just kind of go. You gotta have the little faith. Just keep pumping the pump. It'll happen. Excellent. Good points. All right, so I skipped ahead a couple because I know this is one that some of you have actually asked me to ask them. Uh, the first one is speed counts. Now, I shared this two tactics ago, and it created some heartburn because people didn't like what NAR was saying about how fast we had to risk or should respond to our online consumers. So instead of it coming from me, I'm going to have you be the firing squad. So why don't you guys share with us what are what's your standards for your team of how fast you respond to people? So... We just had this conversation yesterday with my buyer's agents. If you're not responding within two minutes, your odds have gone down. If you're not responding within five minutes, you're about 30% less. And if it's over 10 minutes, they're almost dead um, because they literally are hopping sites. So um, the number one thing I can encourage everybody is get them offline. Just get them into the office, put a face to your name, and just love them with your knowledge and just get a buyer's rep before they go. If you don't have a buyer, you know, just close for the buyer consultation. You'd be surprised if a lot of people think buyers don't want to come into the office. And we implemented a we won't work with you if you don't come into the office first policy. It freaked me out for the first while and it's great. I mean, our conversions are way up. And it's a lot different. Okay, and Stephen, I've heard from a bird that you follow a similar process as far as the meeting in the office. Is that correct? Yeah, I know. I know. I like to say we're 100 like like Jason is, but every once in a while there's there's room to make exceptions, and it's your own business, so do what you got to do. But I think it's a great general rule, general policy. If I can add to that, um, talking about volume, I think one of the ways that you got to one of the mindsets you have to have in order to make volume work is be able to move on quickly from uh, an untenable lead. And if there's a saying that says there's no bad leads in our business, but there are leads who are already working with another agent, and I would call that an untenable lead. Um, and so my first, I've kind of learned the hard way, my first question usually when I get a text or an email or a call from somebody is, oh great, I'd love to help you out and answer your questions on that. By the way, do you have an agent you're working with? And I just go right right for that. Nine times out of ten, if they do, they'll say yes. And if you want to follow up with it, you can say, okay, I'll sign an agreement with them, how loyal to you. You can push on that if you want. But a lot of times they'll say, uh, yeah, I work with so-and-so at Windermere or wherever. And that, for me, that's, a, okay, time to move on. And it's sort of a survival technique because if you try to turn every lead, even the untenable ones, into somebody that's going to come to the office, it's, it's really a recipe for burnout, especially if you're doing the numbers game, if you're doing volume. So if you're going to take the advice of getting as many leads as possible, we're going to convert as many as possible. The sooner you can scrub those and find out if there's somebody that's going to, going to be a payoff. And to me, the only disqualifier is if they've already uh, are loyal to another agent. That's really the only thing. Two years out, file bankruptcy, all those things are overcomable. Um, and I've had one person say, yeah, I've got somebody selling my house, they're listing my house for me, but I'm not sure they're going to, I'm going to work with them to help me buy something. 
Oh, really? Tell me more about that. And so we had a conversation. Well, they weren't really aggressive. They didn't really do this and that. Well, let me tell you what I can provide for you. They choose to work for me. Yeah, we're open to that. Uh, long story short, I ended up going out to their home, signing the buyer's rep. Now, you're sure your agent's okay with this? You told them what your plan is. You don't have a buyer's rep. Absolutely not. You double check. We're not going to work with them. They know we're working with somebody else. Okay, here you go. Let's sign. Sign the buyer's rep, and, and we're in escrow on a, on a piece of property with them. So, it doesn't always mean that it wasn't me, was it? Me. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not all that say it doesn't mean that just because they're working with somebody, it's a, it's a closed door. Uh, but a lot, most of the time it is. And that, that's all I would move on from. Are right? right. you okay with that? Okay, wait for the next one. All right, so Andrew and Chris, um, what are you guys' best practices? We talked about um, connecting with people, reaching out to them. How long do you work that lead before you give up on them? Like, how many times do you contact them? What methods do you use quickly? Like, how. When is it? When do you call flatline and say I'm moving on to the next person? Normally, we work or leave until we just can't get any more communication. But what that means is I've tried, you know, if I've had communication with somebody and I've tried one or two calls for a couple weeks, two or three weeks, it's kind of like a month. No respond to emails, no respond to text. I'm going to put them on an archive, and what that does, it puts them in an archive drip and basically gives them another four months of emails. Just hey, you know, just thinking about you, et cetera, et cetera. No response, it's just kind of gone on the wind, and then you know maybe someday they'll go back on the website or not. Um, but then sometimes they'll respond to that email and it notifies me, hey, they're back talking to you. Um, sometimes when it dries up, it dries up, you know, they don't want to tell you, or you know, maybe they have to maybe they tried to get approved for a loan, they couldn't, and they were embarrassed. I don't know, stuff happens. So that's yeah, similar thing. It's just if you're into about six calls and you're texting and you're emailing them and you get no response, and then you look at their history as well is if they're active on the site. If they're not active on the site, we get a lot of those and these guys will see that. You'll get them on the site and they visited one time. And that was it. They were just on, the, on for one day and they, they, they were just looking. And so probably going to look at multiple sites. And so after that time, you drift them for a while. If they respond to you, then great. If not, you're moving on. You're not investing a lot of time until you start engaging those conversations both by either text or just phone calls or a sidebar to that is try different times. So like text somebody at 7.30 or call them actually at 7.30 in the morning. They might get frustrated, but you're like, well, my heart is working on in business. Shouldn't we meet? You know, I mean, something to that effect because we're working. If we're working the same hours they're working, you're not going to reach them always. You know, or call them at night right for the purpose of that. So mix up the method and the time. Okay? All right, so we're going to close with this last piece, which is the close, right? So um, these people up here obviously have figured out this part of the process, the most important part of the process, because their paychecks do reflect it. Uh, that being said, um, how? what is the best way you guys have found to close for that first appointment? What works the best for you? Maybe what was a miserable failure for you? But each of you, if you have something to share quickly, if you can share with us, what's your best method of getting that appointment? So... For me, it's just, um, like I said, a lot of uh, my leads come from out of town, so I always ask them when I'm going through, well, if you want me, you know, hey, when's the next time you plan on visiting the area? And um, then I'd like to sit down and give you some information about the legacy group and also go through your search criteria uh, more direct um, on, on Flex system. So generally, they're like, oh, that'd be great. We're going to be there this time, or I'll let you know. Uh, when we do plan on coming up that way. So you're like selling a consultation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. What about you, Brian? Or James? I'll go ahead. I was just going to say for for us, I really, it sounds weird, but I don't like appointments because they make me nervous, but I do have money. <laughs> so we have a lot of people coming in for land. We do about half land, half houses. And I have a lot of people that want to come in that do not want us with them. And one thing that I've done, you know, in the last year or so is is offer something, come from some kind of value. Hey, I was born and raised here. Now, everybody can't say that, but use whatever you can to where we can invite them into the office. I'll tell you, if you don't get eyeball to eyeball with people, they are not loyal to you. And even if you have a husband and a wife that are going to make the decision, you better have them both there or you probably lost them. I've lost tons of that. If you can get people eyeball to eyeball, it almost seems to commit them a little bit more to you. 
a lot of times, we'll, hey, you're just coming to the area, let me print off a map, let me steer you in the right direction, just a little bit of a tour. If they don't want me with them, at least come in for five, ten minutes, not a big pushy thing, sign this and do all this, but just get them in to meet you so, so they can, you know, just get them in front of you. That seems to help us with our conversion. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. If you guys give them a round of applause.